Hello and welcome back to my walkthrough of the KSP career. My name is Rick Negative and let's get cracking today. We're going to be positioning a satellite in a specific orbit around Kerbin. And this is going to be the Dinklesat. I like that name, Dinklesat. Now, first things first, whenever you're doing one of these satellite contracts, there is something you need to look at. It'll show you in the map where the orbit is, okay? So it's a pretty big orbit actually. That's um that's all that's almost like uh, double Kerbo stationary, as in the orbit. The Earth will rotate twice for every time this orbits once. The main thing that you want to look at, though, is which way the little dots are going. Okay, and then what you want to do is you want to compare those dots with what way your norm, your stuff is normally orbiting. You should have some stuff in orbit. If they're going the same way know that you can launch in the same way that you normally do, that is to the east. If that is going backwards, okay, if these dots were going the other way, just be aware of that, because that is a, um, obviously a counter, counter clockwise? No. No, that's a clockwise orbit, and uh, to do that, you would actually have to go from the launch pad that away, rather than from the launch pad that away okay so just keep that in mind now I'm gonna do the design the launcher everything in the video so that you guys can see how well that I do it now for the contract it says that we need a, an antenna and it must be able to generate power uh, must be around there with a reasonable deviation yeah we can do that so we're gonna start with a proto Brodobodyne, uh, octocore. We're going to get the stuff that we need on it. So we're going to get some photovoltaic cells. We're going to get four of them. Come on, there we go. Yep, that looks good. Uh, we are going to well, need some antenna. Love it. Uh, what we could do with these? Okay, we could grab them. Rotate them down. Oh, that looks like there's stuff right there. Mm-hmm. These widgets, get used to them. Okay, twos offset, threes rotate. Uh, I use them all the time. You'll notice that my craft get really funky and I'll do like part clipping and all kinds of goodness. Actually, hold on, can we is that a node there? Can we perhaps stick them on? Can we No, yes, maybe. And basically, when I'm, whenever I'm designing something, I just try a bunch of stuff out and see what looks good. Uh, there's no rhyme or reason to it. It's just see what works. Oh, for example, here's a... Mm-hmm. Works for me. So this is the Dinkle Sap. I like naming them after the contracts because they take all of the hard work out of it. That's a little bit big. Now, what I'd like... Oh, that's a little bit big. Here we go. Now, what we've got is an RCS tank. And what we're going to do is we are going to place a place anywhere thrust on the back of it and we don't want three of them we want two of them so these are going to be quite strong for the little bugger now that doesn't pick it up unfortunately so question do we have an antenna yes we've got four can it generate power yes it has solar panels can it maneuver on its own yes it has some RCS and some thrusters do we have reaction control? Yes, we've got a little gyroscope thingy. Is this a functional little craft? I think so. So let's get on with building the launcher. Okay, little stack to coupler. And what we'll do is... Uh, actually, we'll, we'll stick this in a payload bay. Yeah, that's, that's what's up. Oh, yes. Check, check this out. Mm-hmm. This is what's up. 
<laughs> yeah. Mm hmm. Excellent. So, now I've got my little payload, I can work on the rocket. Now, I'm going to go with a pretty standard little build here engine LV909. It's got a ton. Oh, I'm still on Minimus. Uh, be careful of this if you're using this. Uh, if you're using Kerbal Engineer and you start changing the body around, be sure to change it back. Obviously, I was building the Mr. Slip from the last episode where we we had the Muna Lander, or the Minimus Lander. Let's go structural decoupler. I'm gonna need a bit of poke on this one. Now, what I'd like to do is go something like this. Okay, grab two of them. Yep. Engines. Let's have a look at the T45. Five, three. It's not exactly strong enough for me. Let's see what we can do with this. No, I want this one. I'm going to get a bit of a Thor 2 thing happening. Now I'll use the offset tool, okay. Smooth move. So I've turned off that snap to the angle. And now I just want to jiggle it around until it looks good. I reckon that looks alright there. Now what I'll do is I'll grab the angle snap, turn that back on, because I'd like to rotate these so they look symmetrical. Yeah, that's what's up. Fancy engine block, hello. Okay, thruster weight, delta V, atmospheric looks the goods. Delta V is five and a half thousand. Actually, we could load up the top stage a little bit more. Now, what am I aiming for? Don't know. I'm thinking about 6,000 delta V. Yeah, that's about right. There we go. Dinkle sat and launcher. Safe. Uh, what I might do is I might just strut around this joint here. Because these have been insanely wobbly. I'll go 8 times symmetry, link to there, uh, didn't quite work, nope not quite, oh dear I picked it up, nope, come on, I, I want to pick this up, gotcha, now then, so we can get it on that lip and run it to that lip, still didn't work. Worked even worse there. What about, what about, what about if I go this way? Yeah. Looks good to me. <laughs> let's run with that. Okay, uh, let's check state engine. So we've got two engines at the bottom. We're going to stage, get the kicker stage going. The stage, uh, oops, fairings will need to be there. And then we've got a decoupler for the last one. Remember your decoupler in here because otherwise it'll be stuck to the fairing base and you'll never get it off. Oh well, you'll need to put a, a big giant spatula into orbit to get it off. Uh, am I happy with all of that? I think so. Let me just have a look at action groups quickly. Number one is going to toggle the communitrons. Man, that, that's, that's about it really. Save. Let's get this thing into orbit. Now what am I going to do? Basically I'm just going to go straight up. Well I'm going to enter a normal orbit but I'll just keep pushing the apoapsis up to something that is close to what we're looking for. So we need to position a satellite into a certain orbit. Okay there we go. So we've got that up ready to go. Throttle up SAS engage. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Power on, baby. Now, if you want to do it like properly, properly, what you would do is you would wait for the ascending or descending node to come over the top of the KSC. That would be the way of doing it. That's how the pros do it. So, what we need to do? See, oh, actually, that that's actually kind of close. Oh, that is ridiculously close. 
Yep, so basically you'd launch when I launched, uh, so that the DN is right over the top of you. Ooh, we want to throttle down a little bit, because we're going a bit quick. We don't want to do a Falcon 9. So I was up late watching that. CRS 7, horrible stuff. I was actually in EJSA's stream, because he's a nutter when it comes to that kind of stuff, and poor bastard was uh, devastated to see it uh, go pop. Now, good news, unmanned probe has an antenna and can generate power. Done. Excellent. That was easy. So what I want to do is I want to start pushing the uh, the prograde over a bit more. And we'll throttle down. We don't really want anything more than you know 1.7. Until we get a little bit higher and then we'll throttle up. Come with the power. Now we've gone extremely high on this, but whatever. I'm hoping that this is big enough and powerful enough to get us to where we need to be. Oh, come on, turn, you bugger. I like this bottom stage, that's awesome. Looks the goods, too. So it's got us up nice and high, which I suppose has the added benefit of being uh, good for the LV909. Uh, you can see it's pretty much at max uh, max efficiency now. So what we're going to do is have a look here. Nope, that's going in the wrong direction. Hey, and what we're gonna, I'm going to do is I'm just going to come off to the side, see if I can cancel out some of this uh, this orbital uh, plane issue. And it's easy to do when you're launching. Now there's my apoapsis. Shame I can't click on that. Three degrees, two point nine. I dare say this is going to hit a point where it's going to go back the other way. There it is. Whoa! I'm going to keep it at three. I'm happy with that. And that's because of where I've launched. It was not exactly over the DN. So we'll keep uh, keep pushing here. Keep burning for space. So that's all fine. We've got 3,000 DV in the tank. Lovely. Now, uh, ooh, quick, I need to get rid of the fairing. I should have taken a screenshot though. Oh yeah. So there's our little satellite being boosted up to its orbit. LV909 at full efficiency now. Well and truly into space. So I'm just going to keep going and pushing this apoapsis up until we get to somewhere around here. Now 3.3 .3 is much easier to deal with than say 9.1 or whatever it was when we started this. We need to get it way out to 4 million. Now there'll be a fair bit of monkeying around. You need uh, patience as always. So be uh, prepared to bring a cut lunch because this could take a little while to get all of this pretty well spot on. The good news is the A and the D and are actually quite close to the apoapsis, or the apoapsis and the periapsis. So that means that when we make our maneuvers that we're going to have to make, uh, basically they're going to be very close to where we need them anyway. So, a million. Now with these orbital shenanigans, I'm always going to keep it as close to the prograde as I can. Okay, there's 3.4. Oh, wrong button. Okay, let's get this. Let's blow up the orbit. You can see what happens with the maneuver, okay? 
the further you get close to the planet, you're seeing, look at the change there in the orbit. When you get out here, not so much. You know, it's it's a much bigger change. That Ober effect is extremely useful. Now, really, what I would have liked to have done is get the whatever I am straight up to where I needed it to be. So we're going to have to do a little bit of fooling around. It's a shame I can't set this as a target. I'd like that functionality. Oh well. We'll work with it. I've got battery power, so that's the good news. Alright, stop. Point prograde. Throttle up. Wait, what? Oh, that's surface mode. Hello. Why am in surface mode? Interesting stuff. Alright. You can see that my Apple Apsis is spinning. Oh, there we go. So, that's what I wanted. Now what I can do next time around... Oh, no, no, no. I want to add maneuver. Unset target. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to oh, bend my orbit this way. Okay, get it to match up with that one. Mm, looks close. And I also want to boost the periapsis at the same time. Oh, that boost the apoapsis. Up to close to what that periapsis is. So two birds, one stone. 69 meters per second is what it's going to cost me. I'm going to do it in roughly an hour. So I'll just warp straight there. Please. Please can I warp? Okay. Zero add alarm. Do it the old fashioned way. Now this, don't worry about this, this is for interplanetary transfers and that kind of stuff. I'm uh, trying it out, seeing if I can get it to work nice. Oh, I'm close! Oh dear. How close am I? Go away. Yep, close enough. And do I null it out? We yeah, are close too. Excellent. So I'll warp around here now. Right, and it's just a matter of just fine-tuning things, getting things as close as you can. Okay, one, oh, stop, I need to actually orientate my craft, that's the retrograde marker, don't want that one. I want the prograde. Here we go, now. Up you go, buddy. Now there is a percentage error that you can have in these. And all you have to do is get it close. You can get it close, you'll be fine. Okay, there's the apoapsis up. That's at 42, it needs to go to 47. So 44, 45, 46, 47. Now we've actually got tons of Delta V in this stage. I overcooked it a little bit. That's alright. Yeah, go away. Oh, there you go. So, as I said, uh, you only need to get it close and you will complete the contract. So, thank you very much for joining me. Be sure to ask questions if you have them. I look forward to seeing the next episode.